Okay, so um, where we left off in, in the Russian Revolution, the, the Tsar had just lost power. The Tsar um, had, had been told by his wife, who, who really he had kind of lost um, a connection with, but, but who was in charge of, um, of the capital of the government center of, of Russia, that um, there was a group of hooligans, right, who were post protesting. I, I laughed because my, I don't know if you guys know this about my about me. My wife is Russian. Um, her mom came here in the 80s. My wife was born here. Um, but, you know, huge amount. She had a bunch of family members who came in the 90s, and they're very strong. They're still connected to, to Mother Russia. Um, and uh, her mom is always calling my children hooligans. <laughs> she calls everyone hooligans. It's, it's, it's her thing, hooligan skis, she will say. I think it's hilarious. And then I'm reading in the book here how uh, the, um, the wife of the czar had called the protesters hooligans. I just, I just okay, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so he says fire on them, right? And, and the soldiers refuse to. Actually, a lot of the soldiers join in with the protesters. And um, a meeting is called of the Duma. Now, the Duma is the legislative body, the governing body in Russia at this period. Um, it's kind of like our Congress, let's say. <clears throat> and at this time, the Duma was made up of mostly middle class or upper class Russians, okay? People who had historically had power, rich, aristocratic families. Um, who were really the 1%. And then this kind of bourgeoisie class, the kind of rich business owners, who again, were a very small percentage of the population. Russia was also behind Europe economically. And where, you know, we see a growing middle class in Europe with the United States in the 1800s, not so much in Russia. Um, so we, we see a, a Duma now, we see a legislative body made up of rich and no, nobles and the people don't really connect with the Duma, but they tell, they tell him, they say, hey, look, you, you should step down. Tsar Nicholas II, um, your time is over. And he does. Um, now, this is where a huge mistake is made. Um, Alexander, Kerensky um, decides to stay in the war. Most Russians don't want to fight in this war, but he says, no, we have to protect Russia's honor after what happened with Japan and we should keep fighting. History suggests that if he had ended the war right there, who knows, maybe Russia doesn't have this revolution. But because of it, a lot of people now, especially outside of the capital of Moscow, they start to lose faith in the government. And, and, and people start to form these little town halls. I got to tell you guys, um, I'm a big fan of town halls. That, that's democracy in action. Um, if you ever get a chance, you know, um, check out the West Hills or the Canoga Park Town Hall. Um, the, the, these people are a step below the city council, okay? But, and, and here's the thing, right? They, they do these little small city things, small silly things that like people in downtown don't even really get. Um, I, I was at a meeting and um, they're talking about how the bus stop, okay, on Platt, near Platt Village, blocks the view of people exiting the parking lot. And since the speed limit on Platt is, is pretty high, cars zoom down the street, it's, it's dangerous, and there's been a few accidents. This is how small these issues that these city councils deal with, and they have no real power here in, in, um, in our city right except only as an advisory board but but this is the kind of thing we're talking about right we're not talking about a powerful group these people just they want their say and if you ever get a chance check out a city hall it's really interesting um or uh, yeah like a town town hall meeting they're all over the place they're, they're everywhere woodland hills housing um, they were recently talking about the new complex that was going to be built where the promenade was. I don't know if you guys are reading about this. There's going to be like a sports complex there, like a sports arena that's going to seat 5,000. They're going to have like concerts, maybe games. I think it sounds awesome. But people were like talking about traffic flow on Oxnard, right? And now it's going to be all backed up 
this is the kind of thing. So, so we're talking about, so now these Soviets are town halls and um, they're meeting and they're wanting to have a say in government. And um, as the government continues war, these town halls, they get angrier and they get larger and more and more people start to join. These town halls are made up mostly of ex-soldiers, workers, and peasants outside of the cities. Um, and they were very unhappy with the government. And one Soviet in Petrograd, which is actually now called St. Petersburg, which is Russia's second largest city, um, becomes extremely powerful. And we're gonna find that this is gonna be the place where um, the rebel, where the opposition forces of the revolution begin. One thing to keep in mind now at this point is that um, a guy named Vladimir Lenin is gonna show up at the St. Petersburg Soviet and he's gonna bring socialist ideas with him. He's gonna push for socialist ideas in Russia. He's gonna get a very strong ally named Leon Trotsky who Many suggest is brilliant. Vladimir Putin, I'm sorry, Vladimir Lenin was um, German. They had, they, actually, the Germans sent him to St. Petersburg to kind of cause, to foment, um, maybe not a revolution, but certainly some sort of um, disturbance. And um, Leon Trotsky, though, he's Russian. Okay, he's a homegrown kid um, and he's brilliant. Um, and he and Lenin are, are gonna lead this revolution from St. Petersburg against the provisional government that was set up under Kerensky. There's so much to this story. Um, I don't have the time to do it justice in this class, but if you ever get a chance to, to dig deep into it, this is a fascinating moment in history.